بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله question was asked السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أحسن الله عليكم عليك there is a group here in the UK who say for one to be Salafi they must associate and adhere with only their masjid and organization making their organization the mizan or meaning the the place for measurement for someone's salafia when asked which scholar said that they will give a teskia of one sheikh who praised them etc how do we respond to this they also state that for someone to teach they need a teskia is this correct and is this a matter in which there is a difference of opinion barakallahu fikum wa fikum barakallahu wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi <clears throat> I think, in general, alhamd, that this issue has been addressed many times around the world, not just in the UK, but that many of the Talibat al-Ilm have addressed this. And more importantly, the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah have dealt with this and written books extensively about this that you'll find in the English language. And of course, you'll find a plethora in the Arabic language, which is a ni'mah min ni'amillah. And so they talk about the dangers of hizbiyah, and Imam bin Uthameen, rahmatullahi although I don't have the statement, but I, I've talked about this and you'll find it if you want to search on my YouTube channel, you'll find that I've talked about and read the statement of bin Uthameen with ta'liqat, with uh, commentary, showing that we have to contextualize what that great Imam said in the context of what he said regarding other statements about da'wah to Ahl sunnah or da'wah to Salafiyyah, etc. Because some people try to use this as a hujjah to say, don't call yourself Salafi or that Salafiyah is a bid'ah, or something like this. And most of the people, I can honestly say, they don't understand what the Sheikh says, and I don't know it's, if it's because of a lack of Arabic, but even Arabs use it. So I don't really understand why they don't look at the statements of Imam bin Uthameen in totality. Look at his many statements that he uses the term Salafiyah, and Salafiyah is not a clique, and it's not a cult, and it's not a gang. So we have to know that first and foremost. Secondly, habatifillah, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us and bless you, protect us and protect you, preserve us and preserve you, forgive us and forgive you. We have to understand that, <clears throat> as is mentioned, so there's a group in the UK or a group, it doesn't matter if they're in France or Germany or Italy or China, who say for one to be Salafi, they must associate and adhere with only their masajid and organization. We know that this is a, a, a very dangerous sickness of Hezbiyah because it's not Salafiyah. That's what we have to, I'm going to go into this and I'm going to try to be as concise as I can, but I'm not good at, con at being concise. So Ahabatifillah, first and foremost, as the scholars of fiqh say, Al-Ibra The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. Okay, it's in its substance. So someone can claim they're Salafi and they can be in the UK, they can be in France, they can be in the US, they can be in Saudi, but they may not reflect Salafiyah. Because what I see that in this situation, I see a lot of Hizbis who go against the Dawah to Salafiyah and they go against people who believe that they are the elite Salafis, like we the Salafis. You'll see them in their bayan and you'll see them on their websites and you'll see them in their re reputations and you'll see them in their clarifications. We the Salafis. That's a very strange concept that they are the Salafis, but I don't know who else is. They are the Salafis, but the scholars aren't the Salafis? I don't know, it's weird. And, and alhamdulillah, I think uh, uh, Sheikh Tahir and uh, Sheikh Muhammad Munir and Sheikh Ali Davis and the brothers at... Uh, have dealt with this when they had their, they began their uh, dawa in the, uh, in their institute there, uh, the Imam Muslim Family Center, that they talked about, they had a series of talks talking about monopolizing Salafia and so on and so forth. I know Tahir's done it and others. And this is very important, regardless of what your opinion is of Tahir or your opinion is of this one or your opinion is of this one, the haq is the haq. The haq is the haq. And we take the haq from wherever it comes. So it's very important to know and understand that no one can monopolize the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. As Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wad'i said, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, da'wah to min kitabi la ila kitabi la. 
ومن سنتي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم إلى سنتي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم دعوة أهل السنة is the da'wah from the book of Allah to the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم that's the da'wah to Ahl sunnah if you want to know what the da'wah to Salafi is have the da'wah to Salafi have the da'wah to Ahl sunnah so it's not about calling two scholars Three scholars in Medina, in Mecca, wherever they may be, and say that they represent Dawah to Salafiyah. There are many mashayikh of Dawah to Salafiyah, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. And we know them, their mizan is the book in the Sunnah. It isn't a group, it isn't a clique, it isn't a cult. So, first and foremost, Ahabba Tifila, we have to know that for those who uh, make this mizan that this is a mizan bid'iya. This is a mizan or a scale based on bid'a, based on desires, based on his bia. And as a a brother who who sp spoke to me many years ago, and he mentioned about the concept of when people make claims like this, or they accuse, for example, the one who claims that everyone else is a hisbi, you find. That three, when they point, this is an Oromo proverb from one of the tribes in Ethiopia, that when you are pointing the finger at them, three fingers are returning to you. And we see this in the case of some of the people who claim we, the Salafis, we are the Salafis, we represent the Salafis. And that doesn't take anything away from Salafia. La yadur Salafia. And they don't hurt Ahl Sunnah even when they do this. But what hurts the way of dawah and scares people away is that people accept those claims. For example, I know many Salafis who say that certain dawah organizations in the UK, they say they are, they call them the ghulat, they call them the extremist. And I think this is incorrect. This is wrong. And I don't think it's correct to say there are balanced Salafis. And I say this, even some of my closest companions use this term and we've talked about this, but I think it's wrong. Because either you're Salafi or you're not. You're not a balanced Salafi and you're a, a Salafi of the Ghulat. La. When someone has this Ghulu, they are entering into Hizbiya. So perhaps they don't even warrant the claim of Salafiya anymore. They're Hizbis. They're Hizbis even though they claim Salafi. Even if they love some of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah and they make Tabdi of Jamia or uh, Baqi. They, they make Tabdi of, of many of the other scholars of Ahl Sunnah. And this is a terrible travesty that has befallen the, the dawah efforts. But subhanAllah, even with that, and even though people like Dr. Qadi, and I got to use his name, and I got to use these other people who write and refute Salafiyah, because we're not going to sit for that. We're not going to sit for it. One second. So his name will be on my tongue as long as he continues to try to harm the dawah to Allah Sunnah. Well, I yudurashay. He can't hurt anything. It doesn't matter if a thousand of the youth go astray because of him. It doesn't matter because hadha bi qadrillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the decree of Allah. But we rest with the promise of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qal, la tizal taifatum min umati dhahirin ala haq hatta yatihum ma amar Allah hum ala thalik. Wa fi ruwaya, ma tizal taifatum min umati dhahirin ala haq la yadurhum man khalifahum wa la man khadalahum hatta tukum as sa'ah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the haq. This is what we want. May Allah bless us to be on the haq. La yudurruhum. No one will harm them. What did he say? La yudurruhum. No one will harm them. Men khalifuhum. Wala men khadalahum. Those who differ with them, nor those who maybe deceive them or those who try to, to uh, you know, bring Ill, illness to them. If you will, or deceive them, or what have you, had to come a So Ahl Sunnah will be mojud. Ahl Sunnah doesn't need me. It doesn't need you. It doesn't need any of us. We should be thankful if we're on the dawah to Ahl Sunnah. If we're in dawah to Salafi, we should be thankful to Allah This is the haq of Islam. Have the Islam. Wulo kari al kafir. Wulo kari ahl bid'a. Wulo kari ahl shubahat. It doesn't matter. Because this is the da'wah ta'ala sunnah. That's what we want. And we want to be of the ta'ifah ta'min surah. Kama qala nabiyana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So, it isn't sufficient to have a claim. 
but rather it, it, it deals with your foundation principles. What is your Aqidah? What is your creed? What do you believe? Do you believe in the Arkan of Iman Sitta? And practice the Arkan al Islam al Khamsa? Is that what you practice? Is that what you believe? And do you adhere to it according to the madhab of the Salaf al the pious predecessors? That, that's going back to Al Ibra bi Haqqaiq, Lisa bi Musamiyat. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So a claim doesn't mean anything. <coughs> if someone claims to be Salafi, that doesn't mean they're Salafi. There are takfiris that claim to be Salafi. ISIS claims to follow the Salaf. They claim to follow the Salaf. I don't think Al-Qaeda thinks uh, that's bad, even though they benefited from Sayyid Qutub's books a lot. But many of the groups of takfir, they claim to be from Ahl Sunnati wal Jah. The extreme Sufi Naqshbandis had a conference in Chechnya refuting Wahhabis, trying to refute Ahl Sunnah. La yadur Ahl Sunnah shay. They still smell of bid'ah, these people. They still spread bid'ah and tasawwuf, the extreme tasawwuf and grave worship. And then they called and tawaf around Kabur. It's probably not shirk. I just think it's sinful. You know, whatever all the shubahat Ahl bid'ah comes with. And Ahl shubahat, Ahl shubah, what they come with. La yadur Ahl Sunnah. La yadur Ahl Sunnah. Because we have to adhere to the book and the sunnah. And that's advice first to me before it is to you. So we know that the reality is of, the, of a masajid and organizations, <coughs> they are not the, the scale to measure. And I don't know, I'm dead serious. I don't know to this day. Any of the scholars, Salafi scholars in contemporary times that I hold to be scholars, from the ones that I benefited and listened to and, and, and so forth from tapes or whether it was in person in Saudi Arabia or in Yemen. I would say Tisa'in Bimiya, oh Tisa'wa Tisa'in Bimiya, 99% of them don't call to themselves. There will be some few exceptions of some that may fall into Hizbiya. They fall into Hizbiya. There are some that were on the Sunnah, but then they departed because they began to call to themselves or they began to call to their cliques and only refer to their few people and, and, and leave off the retla ahla sunnah, which is kathir. So the mizan, the scale is not that. So we don't learn this from scholars. A mumin, we don't learn this from scholars. Like I said, there are some examples, some negative exceptions. However, habitifillah, the scale is never what we say, what our group says, what our clique says, but it is what is codified in the madhab of the Salaf al -Sali. It is the minhaj of the Salaf. It is the madhab of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That is the ibra. That is the, 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 the thing we return back to. So that's first and foremost. And as a statement, I believe it's a statement of Imam Malik, and I believe you'll find it in Tamheed Ibn Abdul Barr, <clears throat> in which he says, La Yuraf. Okay, this, this is a, a paraphrase. La Yuraf. La Yuraf al Haq. Birujaw alak in Yuraf al Rijal bil Haq. We don't know the truth by men, but we know the men by the truth. Meaning, the scale is the Haq. It's Islam. It's the Sunnah. It's the Madhab of the Salaf. That's the truth. And then we put the men on that and we weigh them according to that. We look at them to see, oh, is he practicing the menhaj of the Salaf or is he on the menhaj of the Tasawwuf? Is he an Ashiri or is he from Ahlul Sunnah? Is he Diobandi or is he from Ahlul Sunnah? Is he uh, Naqshabandi or is he from Ahlul Sunnah? Because they all differ with regards to some important Messiah of Tawheed. It's not a personal thing. It's not because he's in he's in Diobund or he's in this place or that place. It has nothing to do with race or nationality or his skin is like this, his beard looks like this. La. The Mizan is the, is the Menhaj of the Salaf. Is that what Ahla Hadith we're calling to? Ahla Athar wa Ahla Sunnah wa Ahla Sunnati wa Jama'ah? Wa Taifat Mansura? Is that what they were calling to? If that's what it is, then we want to be on that. But if it's other than that, in Aqidah, then we want no part of it. And we don't refer to it as Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And nor is it a Mizan, nor is it a scale to measure. 
So when asked what scholar said that they will give a teski of one sheikh, it doesn't, again, some of the same people who claim and use teskiyat, at the same time, they will call, make ibtal, they will talk about other people's teski and say, oh, that was then. Sheikh so-and-so used to be praiseworthy. But I guess they're perennially praiseworthy. They're forever praiseworthy, according to them. But really, the scale, you know, it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wa ta'ala will expose those people who abuse, misuse, and deceive under the guise of Islam or Salafiyah. As far as a person needing tezkiyah, that this is something valuable, and it has been something throughout the history of Islam. As far as it being an obligation, no, you can't say that. You can't say that someone has to have a tizkiyah from Sheikh so-and-so. Because there's many people who don't have tizkiyah, but they teach the book and the sunnah according to their level. Balagha anni wa ayah. Wa kathir wa kathir. Min al-nasus. There's a lot of text to support that, that it's not necessary that you have it, especially from Sheikh so-and-so or Sheikh so-and-so. I'm saying that this is a khair and this is a sunnah in Islam. But as far as it being necessary and that if so-and-so doesn't have a tizkiyah, you, you definitely don't listen to them. Meaning an official tizkiyah because hopefully that you know something about the people you learn from, that you take knowledge from, that they studied with mashayikh, scholars that are known from the sunnah. And hopefully they have some uh, you know, a tizkiyah, like I said, is, is positive, it's good. But some people put too much emphasis on the tizkiyah and the people don't even have knowledge and they and they have a tizkiyah because it shows you how it's not that difficult to get tizkiyah and to get uh, the permission to teach or something like that. So that is not the ibrah. We ask Allah to, the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad.